Today we're running through five tips to improve your portrait photography. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. If that sounds good, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single episode. This week, we're talking about portrait photography. We're running through five tips to improve your portrait photography. Let's dive straight in. No point hanging around. Tip number one, be deliberate with your spacing. And what I mean by this is fill the frame, or don't, but make a conscious choice about why you're doing it. So normally with a portrait, I look to pretty much fill the frame, right? Because it generally looks the best. It's generally the best kind of way to shoot a portrait because your subject is your subject. So they wanna be the main kind of focus of the photo. And generally speaking, there's no point leaving loads of room around them. The biggest part of this that I find worth consciously thinking about while taking photos is actually the room above your subject's head. Sometimes we can kind of put that a little bit too central and there's a lot of room above. I don't think there's really any need to do that. I think that actually reducing the amount of space above the head is pretty key. I think that's a, a big deal. I think filling your frame with your subject. Now that said, like I said at the beginning, be deliberate with your choice. You don't have to fill the frame with your subject, but if you're not going to, make that a conscious choice, make that a decision and have a reason why you're doing it. So this photo, for example, uh, my subject is way off in the distance, absolutely not filling the frame, but that's kind of the point, right? It's almost like an adventure kind of environmental portrait to kind of capture her taking photo of this, this landscape. You know, that is certainly a good reason not to fill the frame is if you want to have an environmental portrait where you are including a lot of the environment around your subject. If you want to tell a bit of a story with your portrait. So if they're small in the frame with something big kind of surrounding them or they're just small in the environment, that can look fantastic. But either way, be deliberate with your choice. And we're actually gonna come into that again now. Tip number two, be deliberate with your angle as well. Generally speaking, again, for portraits, my go-to kind of angle is eye level straight on because that's pretty much how, you know, we see the world and it's a good spot to get eye contact with the lens. And, you know, it feels both comfortable and enticing with the eye contact. So that's a good place to start. But you absolutely can mix up your angles. So you could you could absolutely shoot down onto your subject if you want to. You get higher and shoot down, or you can shoot up so you're below them and they're above. These have different kind of feelings to the photo. So you wanna be deliberate with the choice of the angle that you're gonna use. If you shoot up at your subject, you're kind of making them feel a bit heroic. You know, you're, looking, you're literally looking up at them. So you kind of put them on a bit of a pedestal. It gives a different feeling. If you're looking down on them, it can be a very different feel again as well. So be deliberate with your angles. Think about these kinds of things before taking the photo rather than just going straight in for the eye level or just going straight in and just snapping photos. The worst thing you could do is to just take photos from where you're standing, your height, without thinking about it. You know, you might get lucky, it might be fine, but generally I'd say that's the worst thing not to even think about it at all. So be deliberate with those angles. Let's go for round three of being deliberate. Tip number three, be deliberate with your background as well. Now this plays a big part into kind of focal length and that kind of thing that you're using for your photo. I use a lot of 85 millimeter for portraits because it means that I get a lot of opportunity to shoot in areas where maybe not everything looks great, but there's one tiny bit of an area that looks fantastic and I can just have that as the background. You know, same with a 50 mil or if you're gonna shoot 35 mil, you just wanna be deliberate about how you're gonna use that background. This photo, for example, not ideal. I've got a lot of people walking around in the background. That's not to say that it's bad, but I, that wasn't what I was going for. It just happened to be what I had to do. If I was using a different focal length, I might be able to kind of get rid of them, focus on different part of the background, and that might've worked better for the photo. I think they're a little bit distracting. You wanna remove any distractions from the background because your subject is the focal point of the image. So you don't wanna be distracted by things in the background. This also plays a big part into how much bokeh you have in the image. You know, what is the depth of field? It can be very tempting to just go wide open. You know, f1.8, f1.8. 1.4, ooh, f1.2. Lovely, beautiful, blurred backgrounds, but is that definitely what you want? You know, are you just doing it because it looks nice? You know, it's a, it's a wide open, that's super cool. Or are you making a conscious choice to have a blurred background? Sometimes you might wanna actually stop down f4, f5.6, f8, 
get more of the scene in focus, have more of a visible background, that's definitely something to consider depending on what kind of photo you want to go for, what kind of story you're telling, what kind of what kind of feeling do you want to bring from this photo? So you want to be deliberate with it. It's absolutely fine and, and I shoot wide open all the time. I love shooting wide open. So like with the other two tips, it wants to be a conscious choice rather than shooting wide open because it's cool. You want to be deciding that you want a nice blurred background or that you want more of it in focus. Now tip number four, bit of an obvious one, but the eyes are generally the most important part of a portrait. So you want to focus both literally and figuratively on the eyes. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this. There's times when that's not the case, but for the most part, the eyes are the most important part. So they want to be nice and sharp. They want to be in focus. Even if you're shooting super, you know, fast aperture, f1.2 or something like that, you want to make sure the eyes are nice and in focus. So you've got the fall off behind and stuff like that, but the eyes want to be, you know, the focal point. Part of that is because eye contact really is enticing into the image. You know, you'll immediately feel like it's not right if the eyes are out of focus. You know, people like to look into the eyes when they're when they're looking at a photo. It's an important part of it. You know, there's the old saying, the eyes are the window into the soul. And that's absolutely the case in photography. It's super important and they are, it's just kind of one of those rules that you can break, but there's not just not very many good reasons to break it. Of course, you can have portraits where your subject isn't looking at the camera or you can't directly see their eyes but you kind of still want to have the eyes in focus and kind of as the focal point because they just are where we look to see into someone's soul, if you like, or into someone's, you know, mind or just, just looking at someone, you look at the eyes, that's what you do. So that is generally for a portrait going to be the most important part. Tip number five, lighting. Generally speaking, you want to go for nice, soft, diffused light. So if you're shooting outdoors in natural light, which is pretty much how I shoot 90% of my portraits. I do some indoors with lighting and stuff like that, but most of my stuff is outside in natural light. You want to try and go for nice diffused natural light. So generally speaking, if you're shooting on a cloudy day, that's going to be pretty nice even light. That's going to be nice and flattering for your model, for your subject. It's going to look really good. Harder, harsher, direct sunlight creates very kind of angular, harsh shadows, which don't always look great. Of course, there's times when that can work. Of course, there's times where shadows look fantastic and you can play around a little bit with that. But for the most part, you want to go for kind of softer, diffused light because it just is more flattering to your model. Now, that can mean shooting under cover of trees, you know, shooting uh, when the sun is lower in the sky and the light is just generally softer. It can mean all kinds of things. You could bring a diffuser and use that. That can look fantastic as well. But if you are going to shoot in harsher sunlight, if you are going to shoot with more kind of angular, contrasty shadows, make sure it's a deliberate choice. And I'd say that for the most part, across all of the portrait stuff we've talked about, you just wanna make sure that whatever you're doing, it's a deliberate choice rather than something that you're just doing because it's there. That's kind of the worst thing that you can do. And, and a lot of time it'll, it'll work out, but it's not gonna be as fantastic as if you've made these conscious choices for your photograph. Now we've just scratched the surface. I think we're gonna do another portrait tips video because there's loads, there's literally loads. So any tips of your own, pop them down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Any questions, of course, pop them down there as well as a full list of all of the kit used for the photos, the video, this video, everything down in the description. So you can go and check that out for yourselves as well. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me out personally. I'll take it as a personal favor. Thank you very much. I will of course see you in the next video and as always, thanks for watching.